Hey, it's JC1424 once again with March 2020's monthly music episode. Keep in mind, I don't care if you don't like what I listen to, and you shouldn't care if I don't like what you listen to. And before I get into talking about all my favorite music that I found last month, I want to take the time to acknowledge that one of my favorite bands at the moment, they announced an indefinite hiatus coming to the end of February, and that was Red Sun Rising. I was not expecting this. I'm pretty sure a lot of people weren't although they were quiet for the past few months after um, a tour that ended, I think, um, in the fall of last year. But um, I started listening to them in early 2016, which was the beginning of my second half of my senior year in high school. And um, I just came a, a bigger and bigger fan of them as I knew another album was on the way, just because they had just so much momentum from their first album, which was very successful. Their second album came out in 2018, and whenever I, I heard the first lead single to that, um, me and my girlfriend had just started dating, and we were both getting very much into Red Sun Rising. She was already a fan of their song, Emotionless, which is, I think, their most known song to date. It has almost 10 million views on YouTube. And then their album came out, and it just highlighted so many experiences in my life from that point on. Like, whenever I left to go to Talladega, um, the first time I ever went to a NASCAR race and attended it myself... And um, I just put that album on, and you know that morning driving and starting that road trip, it, it was a, such a special experience. And every time I heard it for like the first three months, it was it was something so unique. And I wound up listening to it again several times um, whenever I started having um, um, relationship problems between me and my girlfriend Kayla. And while I was coping with all of that, you know, it was with music, with albums like "A Thousand Suns" by Linkin Park and "Eat the Elephant" by Perfect Circle. And then, of course, Thread by Red Sun Rising. And it's just what the album was about, the feeling that it had, and it, it meant so much to me. So now, every time I hear it, it, I'm thankful that it even exists, because it would take my mind out of any dark places that I would wind up putting myself in. So the, the album itself, the music, is, is like a friend. So I can't help but um, be upset by by this news but i wish all the members of the band the the best future whether it, it is you know going back home and, and something involving family or other music projects even though i wish they would have just stuck with this because i believe that we're gonna be three more albums in the next eight years or something and they would become my favorite band which at the moment is rise against and I think I would have been less sad if it was Rise Against because they've just gone so far and accomplished so much and they've played so much music live and, and, and recorded and everything. But with these guys, I felt like it was really going somewhere. I didn't ever think that it was just ending just like that. But uh, That's the most I want to say about it. Good luck, you guys. Um, number five is Alexa Bliss by Bowling for Soup. Another one of them pop punk bands that isn't necessarily bad, they really know how to meme shit up. I mean, this song is literally about how hot, talented, and quirky this female wrestler is. Adding that to the fact she was already a fan of the band, probably for the past 15 years while she was in like high school and whatever, emo and something. <laughs> but like this, this, is, this song actually exists, and it just came out. Number four is Stab You in the Heart by Green Day. I personally don't think their new album was bad, but it sure as hell wasn't good either. It went by just like that, and it felt like the most progressive car commercial music ever. Except without the car, of course. <laughs> I mean, this one is pretty fun. It's kind of dark. It also reminds me of Wipeout, actually. Number three is Hunting Grounds by In This Moment featuring Joe Cotella. It's always been a hit or miss with this band for me. Her vocals are always hoarse, and it can kind of get out of hand sometimes, if you ask me. She has done many collaborative projects before this, and this lead single is, believe it or not, actually executed in a very fun way. They partner up for a deadly tale with some nasty guitars, but I do have to say that the structure of this song does feel awfully subdued. Number two spot, we have 
brighter side of gray by a five finger death punch. When the lights go down. Closing track to their new comeback album, Fate, or as it is read, F8. I must say, this song and quite a few others on there are some of the greatest performances that I've heard from them in years. This song in particular, it is sincere, full of muscle, dynamic, and feels like a battle being won, as opposed to a battle being born. <laughs> See what I did there. Number one spot, we have Ordinary Man by Ozzy Osbourne, featuring Elton John. Title track from what we now know as his final album. I like my share of music from who we used to consider the darkest man in metal. I know I, I still consider him to be that. But knowing this would be his big ending, I just did not want to miss it. I loved hearing Rocket Man get back in there and Post Malone for the couple tracks. And I'm so happy to, to hear that, you know, them and a few others helped him get back in the studio and make some more music just one last time. Thanks for watching this monthly music vid and episode over.